Mr. President, I come to speak today about the Trump administration's egregious attack on our pristine coastline in the Pacific, the Atlantic, Alaska, and the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Dramatic increases in oil and gas development offshore poses a dramatic impact to our coastal economies in the United States, particularly in the Pacific Northwest. I know many of my colleagues are going to join me on the floor this afternoon to talk about this and the specific impacts in their area. The draft leasing plan, which is uh, what has been put forth by the Secretary of Interior, is an unprecedented attempt to allow offshore oil and grass drill drilling in over 90 percent of the U.S. Outer Continental Shelf, including Washington and Oregon. The truth is that instead of creating new jobs in the oil and gas sector, the administration is posed to choose big oil jobs over other ocean-dependent industries like fishing, shipbuilding, and tourism on our coast. I know this because I've just traveled to many of our coastal communities in the state of Washington who make their livelihood off of fishing or tourism who are very, very concerned by this proposal. And just today, a public hearing was supposed to take place in Tacoma, Washington that the administration canceled. The Trump administration failed to account for the value of the existing robust coastal and ocean economies, which would be jeopardized by expanding offshore drilling in those areas. Our ocean-related economy is so important to our state. Expanding drilling directly threatens the ocean environment, the marine resources that support millions of jobs in construction, fishing, shipbuilding, tourism, recreation, and maritime transport. The ocean-related industries in these areas targeted by the administration's plan contribute over 2.2 million direct jobs and nearly $75 billion in wages and over $150 billion in GDP. The reason I bring this up is because the economic benefits of these industries cannot be overstated. Nearly $8 billion from fishing and seafood, $70 billion from marine transport, and $125 billion from tourism and recreation. And we know that oil spills or other natural disasters related to offshore oil and gas activities like the Exxon Valdez or Deepwater Horizon disaster can disrupt entire coastal economies. We know, for example, that here is what, if you just took the Deepwater Horizon spill in size and compared it to the coastal areas of Washington and Oregon, the impacted area would cover all of Washington and a big chunk of Oregon. We know that these can be devastating. The shore adjacent counties and new targeted areas host over 39 million jobs and contribute over $2 trillion in wages. The economies of the adjacent shore counties represent 65 percent of the affected coastal states' GDP. So that's just one way of saying that coastal states and their economies are big drivers in our U.S. economy, and they are extremely dependent on clean water, coasts, and our oceans and our fisheries. The Washington coast economy relies on healthy, sustainable oceans, which support our fisheries in places like Grays Harbor and Pacific County and many other parts of our state to make sure that they have seafood pro processing, recreation, and tourism. Our Washington maritime economy is $50.3 billion in economic activity and 191,000 jobs. So our economy that also adds to tourism in jobs for anglers, charter boats, cruise guides, at restaurants and hotels and more, are so iconic in the Pacific Northwest. They are what the culture and heritage of our coastal communities are. The fact that so many recreational fishermen uh, can be out on our healthy oceans and attracting more people to come and explore is so much part of the Northwest. Putting that at risk to oil spill activities or activities related to exploration is just not something these communities want to do. Just this past week, I received resolutions from various communities on our Pacific Coast urging that this idea be turned down. Washington and Oregon coasts are not really suited for oil and gas development. First of all, extreme sea states, treacherous storms, the remote nature of our coastlines 
As one of our maritime communities told me, they don't really have the resources for cleanup in the area, even if a spill happened, who would be there to clean it up? In the meantime, our fishermen, even if they have uh, oil sheen behind their fishing boat, can be fined as much as $10,000. So if we're ready to find fishermen $10,000 for an oil sheen behind their boat, why are we proposing a plan in the treacherous waters of the Pacific Northwest without any idea who's going to clean up the mess? Adding to the risk in the Pacific Northwest is the Cascadia subduction zone, one of the most dangerous faults in the United States. The Cascadia subduction zone is long overdue to create a significant earthquake. You hear from lots of people about this. In fact, after the New Yorker wrote a big story called The Big One, many people from across the country emailed me to say, are we ready for this to happen? So I can tell you with what had happened in Japan, people are very concerned about how we prepare for that in the Pacific Northwest. So it makes no sense to put an oil rig on one of the most high-risk earthquake-prone zones in the United States. In a 1991 spill, the dangerous and choppy seas prevented first responders from being able to contain more of the spill. That is why I have fought to improve oil spill, uh, oil spill prevention response in the state of Washington. Things like our Nia Bay tug, which is a full-time rescue, uh, a full-time tug to make sure that we are getting boats safely through our waters, increase oil spill response equipment through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and push for the Coast Guard to invest in research on tar sands oil. Now, those are some of the things that we can do to protect ourselves, but we need to do much more. We must weigh future decisions about where we're allowed to develop oil and gas exploration and the cost that it might be to our coastal economies. We must incorporate lessons we have learned from the disasters like Deepwater Horizon, which is part of this picture, or the Exxon Valdez to improve oil spill prevention and response and safety. They're still very much impacted herring uh, fish from uh, Prince William Sound that still have not fully recovered after the Exxon Valdez. So telling our fishermen that this is a great idea when Washington fisheries, whether it's crab or other, uh, other fisheries, should be susceptible to these kinds of spills is just not something our fishermen want to hear. So despite these efforts, which have been repeatedly blocked in the past to drill off our coast, President Trump wants to roll back important safety regulations that we put in place for Deepwater Horizon, like blowout preventers and well control and production safety. And now Secretary Zinke wants to open these coastal areas. This is something that our state has been responding to his proposal for months and months. We gave very important data to say that this is not a good idea off the coast of Washington. It's interesting because Secretary Zinke gave a last minute decision to Florida who didn't turn in their information about their state on this issue. And then later, after a visit with the governor, Secretary Zinke said that this was something he didn't want to see happen. The people of Washington don't want political games played. They want to have their say on this issue, and they want to make sure their voice is heard loud and clear. Our coastal economies are too important to us from a jobs and cultural perspective to go about even proposing the research on drilling in our coastal areas. I am disappointed that today there was a last minute postponement of a public meeting that was supposed to pl take place in Tacoma, Washington to hear from our citizens about their opposition to expanding oil drilling off our coast. I'm not sure whether there'll be a hearing reschedule or exactly what was behind the cancellation of the public meeting, but it was one of the few opportunities that Washingtonians could express their views on this issue. Based on the vocal opposition of our communities, I have sent a letter to Secretary Zinke with 15 of my House and Senate colleagues from the Pacific Northwest calling on Washington and Oregon to not be part of a future lease program. 
I know that many people, including our governor, have done the same. Members from the Pacific, Atlantic, Gulf Coast, and even Alaska are writing to Secretary Zinke, asking them to exclude future drilling activities in their area. I'm very concerned that we are wasting taxpayer money reanalyzing what we have analyzed before, that oil and gas development in the Pacific Northwest does not make sense for our coastal communities. We want to fight to protect our fishing jobs, our tourism, our recreation, and all the things that are part of the center of our culture on our coast. We hope Secretary Zinke will follow science, protect our coastal economy, stop this foolish idea that drilling off our coast is either necessary or prudent, and move about protecting our federal lands. I thank the President and I yield the floor.